Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting a brilliant attacking game played by Kasparov uh, when he was uh, aged 16. Kasparov is uh, white and his opponent in this game is Marjanovic and the game started d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, b6 and we have a queen's engine g3, bishop b7, bishop g2, bishop e7, castles, castles and with d5 Kasparov plays uh, the Pologayevsky gambit which was the uh, highest fashion at that time because of Pologayevsky playing it with success in uh, the candidate semi-final match against Korchnoi the same year 1980 uh, E takes D5 Knight H4 C6 C takes D5 Knight takes D5 Knight F5 and in this position, Korchnoi in the match against Pulogayevsky played bishop c5, and then Pulogayevsky played uh, e4, knight e7, and Pulogayevsky surprised Korchnoi with knight takes g7 in this position, king takes b4, bishop takes b4, queen d4 check, f6, and queen takes b4. And Pulogayevsky went on to win the game because he was uh, uh, capable of. Uh, exploiting the weaknesses around the black king. Uh, he played his uh, bishop to b2 and uh, had strong attacks along this diagonal. And um, this was a brilliant win for, for Pulogayevsky in the candidate semifinal in 1980. But in this game, Majanovic didn't play uh, bishop c5 like Korsnoy did. He played knight c7 instead. Knight c3, d5, e4, bishop f6, e takes d, c takes d, and bishop f4. And I think the idea of the gambit is very clear at this point. White has very active piece play for, for, for the pawn. Knight b to a6, rook e1, and Marjanovic is having trouble developing properly and played the natural queen d7 to connect uh, his rooks. But this move has been criticized uh, also by Kasparov himself, uh, but it's really difficult for Black uh, to find a good developing plan at this point. Perhaps an idea was to play rook e8 instead, and giving up the, the d5 pawn. Rook takes, knight takes, knight takes d5, knight c5, and rook b1. Uh, but still, white would have a, a very active position. So, queen d7 was played, and Kasparov played bishop h3, which is uh, uh, threatening a discovered attack on the queen. Uh, in particular, uh, the knight h6 check is uh, very dangerous. It would lose uh, Majanovic the queen. So he plays king h8 to move away from this check. But now knight e4 from uh, Kasparov is taking advantage of this queen uh, being unprotected. So the pawn here is uh, is pinned to the queen. Oops. Bishop takes b2, knight g5, protecting the bishop on h3, again threatening all kinds of uh, discover checks whenever this uh, knight moves away. And um, Ribka here suggests uh, the move f6 for black preventing uh, uh, the discovered attack uh, with knight takes g7 because then the queen can recapture. But uh, in the game, uh, Majanovic played queen c6, knight e7 followed attacking the queen, and then queen f6. And it seems to cover everything for black. But in this position, uh, Kasparov played a very nice move. He played knight takes h7 double exclamation mark I think. The queen is attacked and it cannot be taken by the king because after qu king takes uh, a7 then queen h5 check, king queen h6. Bishop takes h6 is not only losing the black the queen but also leading to a quick mate. So uh, Majanovic played uh, queen d4 and um, then came queen h5, 
g6, queen h4, and after bishop takes uh, h, h a1, sorry, then knight f6, check, and in this position Marjanovic uh, resigned because of the line uh, king g7, queen h6, check, king h king takes uh, f6 and then bishop g5 checkmate and now we can see how important this uh, bishop was on h3 it uh, covered also the f5 square but in any case this was a devastating attack um, and black had uh, no chances here so I think this was a good attacking game from a young Kasparov playing a fashionable line and just uh, as one might think that black had everything under control Kasparov launches uh, a brilliant sack uh, with a knight takes uh, h7 and after which uh, his attack is unstoppable. I hope you enjoyed this Kasparov game and I hope to see you on my blog at uh, klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.